Hello and welcome to Omega Enterprise Gateway, or as we call it here, OEG. Think of it as a bridge between Omega sensing devices and the rest of the world. OEG is a standalone IIoT sensing software that delivers device provisioning, state and status monitoring, data logging, as well as visualization and analytics, supporting a variety of Omega devices. So let's jump right in, shall we? When you launch OEG for the first time, you'll be prompted to click on one of these links to access the OEG service. So I'll just click on this IP address here, that launches the OEG login screen, where you'll be prompted to enter an account name and a password. Click on Need Help and that will give you the temporary login credentials. Once you're logged in, the first page you see is the Devices Interface page. This is where you can manage your devices and view your live data. The first thing we'll do here is add a device by clicking on the big plus sign here on the left. That will open the Add Device window. We've got a ZW-REC wireless receiver linked to a ZWED series transmitter that's reading temperature through a smart infrared temperature probe. So in the product family dropdown, I'm going to select wireless. The product model is a ZW-REC. Click add and just like that, there's your ZW-REC with its IP address up at the top of the receiver section of the window. And below that, we can see our ZWED transmitter reading temperature from the infrared temperature sensor. Here at the top of the page, you'll notice the word healthy in green has now been populated with the number one, since we've added just one device and it looks to be working properly. Now if I click into the ZWED, that will bring us into the measurements window. This is where we can view the temperature data coming from our sensors. From here, we can click into settings where we can enter a location by dragging the pin on the map to where our device is located. We can also enter a name to our device. Below that is where we can set up our alarms by clicking on the drop-down menu here and selecting either above, below, or out of range, and that will open an input field where we can type in our values. Then click Update, and your alarms are set. Value scaling can be used to change the unit of measurement or to add an offset to your readings, or to convert one type of reading to another. If we go back to the device window for a moment, we'll see that the alarm has been triggered right here. And if we click back into the device, and then click on Alarms and Events, we can see a log of our alarms here. And now if we click on one of the alarm messages here, we can see the alarm data points here in this graph. Now let's jump over to Dashboard. This interface is where we can configure a custom dashboard to show just the data we want to see. Click on the plus sign in the upper left corner, and that will bring down another plus sign icon, a pencil icon to edit with, and a trash icon to delete a dashboard. We'll click on the plus sign to add a new dashboard, and we'll just name this one Dashboard 01 and click Save. Now we have three widgets in the upper left corner here. The one on the left is Gauge, the one in the middle is Chart, and the one on the right is Label. I'll drag and drop the gauge here in the dashboard area, and that gives us a blank gauge. Then we click on the Edit icon in the right-hand corner of the gauge, and that opens the Dashboard Component Editor. Here we can name our gauge. Let's call it Temp Gauge 001. We can also update the data source. I'll just choose one from the list here. We can also select the range values and also choose how the gauge will look, semicircle, full circle, or arch. Click OK and our gauge is now reading temperature. We can also click and drag on it to resize it or to move it anywhere within the dashboard area. Now let's add a chart. Click on the edit icon to open the dashboard component editor window. I'll name this chart 001. Then click on update data source and choose the devices I want to chart. Click save and then I'll select the time range. I'm going to leave it at 10 minutes. Click OK and there's your customized chart. And once again we can click and drag to move or resize the chart. And now to save our custom dashboard, I'll click on the red check mark in the upper left corner. Click confirm save and there it is. And you can create multiple dashboards. Now let's move on to the historian interface window. Historian creates a report of past readings within a range of time and presents them as a graph. First, I'll click Select Data Points, which opens the Data Points window. You can choose as many as you like, then click OK. Now we can see the IP address to our ZWREC transmitter at the top of the page, showing statistic calculations from our data points. Below that is our graph showing today's data from our selected data points. Now we can select the time range. You can choose today, this week, or if I click Custom, I'm given a calendar input to select the day and time range. I'm going to leave it at today since I've only had this system up and running for a short time. Over here to the right, we can select the different graphing options. We have the standard graph we see here, and if I click the bar graph button, we get this colorful bar graph. The next graphing button will allow us to predict future values. Once we select that, you'll notice some additional buttons appear below the select data points area. If we click on the calendar icon, we can choose the date and time range that we want to predict, then click on the predict future value button, and now we can see based on the calculations what the predicted temperature readings will be. And now if I click on the save icon, it will download a CSV file. And that brings us to the insights window. 
The Insights interface provides analytics on the health and activity of your sensing system. Analytics include operation activities, measurement alarms, communication errors, battery history, and signal history, as well as device online or device offline activity. Now let's move on to the third-party device interface. OEG allows for third-party device integration through Modbus or ASCII. So first we'll register a new device. Click on the plus icon here in the upper left. The register new device window will open. Under family, let's type in controller. Then under model, we'll just make something up here. And under protocol, we'll select Modbus. Provide the connection type. I'll just leave this as TCP and leave it at the standard default TCP port 502. Then click OK. And now our new device appears in the upper left area of the screen. Now we need to add default registers. Whenever a new device is added, we need to pull data from that register. Click on the plus icon below default registers. That will open the add register window. Enter the register type. I'll choose measurement. And let's give it a name. We'll call it temperature. Now put in the register. I'm just going to give it a random number here. And for value type, we'll choose float, since most temperature types are float. And give it a measurement type, degrees C. Then click OK. Now we'll go back to the devices interface, click add and locate our controller in the list. And once we select that, the rest of the information is filled in automatically. One piece of information you will need to enter here is the IP address for the controller. Since we don't really have a third party device here, I'll just make one up and click add. And there is our device, but you'll notice there's a broken chain icon. That's because it's not a real device. Were this an actual device, it would be linked and showing healthy. Now let's look at the system setting. The system settings for OEG allow you to customize your profile, the units displayed, users who can access and view your dashboard, data update rate, license status, and firmware management. So that about covers all the front-end features of OEG. If you still need more information, give us a call or chat online at Omega.com.